Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Anywhere. Streamed and downloaded in your car, bedrooms, and bathrooms ooh, around ooh, ooh, the globe. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's the In Wheel Time car talk show. Just ahead, we're going to talk to DPS State Trooper Mr. Sergeant. Stephen Woodard about new laws now in effect and other things. Plus, we'll get you caught up on the stories making automotive news headlines this week. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world of ours, King Conrad DeLong. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us today. Now, let's go to DPS headquarters and uh, let's talk to Sergeant Stephen Woodard. Hi ho, Steve Arino. Jim, how do you how do you deal with those three, man? What's uh, the I, secret? I, I drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he drinks a lot. Yeah. Well, there's that. Where where are you? Are you at work? Well, uh, I'm, at at a, work. I'm at a uh, list, uh, exclusive location. Um, let's just say I'm available. You're not down in Laredo, are you? No, I'm not down in Laredo. No, there's nothing. Uh, I didn't lose nothing down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Hey, I I I, uh, I have to tell you some uh, fellas. Um, you know, you know, brother Don did a real good job out there in the rural area of Texas when we were trying to uh, capture that guy that conducted an egregious, uh, just a, a horrible. And Don knows what I'm talking about. We appreciate the coverage, Don. Uh, uh, it, man, that was a horrible scene on the ground level. But I was listening to you from the bottom. And through the news feeds, you did a wonderful job out there when we had that standoff. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate that. We you know, I, I try appreciate to appreciate you doing what you do for us. I try to um I try to be very cognizant of what you guys are up to and uh and the stuff that you are are up against and I don't need to add to the pressure of trying to capture people and, and that sort of thing. And so, you know, the, the television station relies on me to kind of use my best judgment. And, you know, it's very easy, especially when you get into some sort of a standoff to give away, uh, locations when you're up there at 1500 feet. And, um, yeah. I, I'm very well aware of that. And so I, I, I'm very cognizant of that and, and, uh, love you guys and want to do it the safe way to get the coverage. But uh, also keep you guys protected as much as I can. Yeah, I noticed that, and I'm gonna get to it. But I just I wanted to take this opportunity. So, fellas, you know, uh, not getting too much into it because I called and asked if I could talk about it, and they said not much. But I will say this: so uh, the professionalism in Don, he understands how we roll, and he he could have gave some information, but he didn't put out uh, you know exact you know, uh, integral information because he knew it was a tactical situation. And uh, believe it or not, guys, you know, that guy was watching the news as well. So uh, well, a lot of times during those standoffs, they just hang out and they listen to the news to see if they can get some information on how they could, you know, basically combat or get away. And, man, you were spot on it. So let, let me let me get it. You know I love you, man. I'm going to get away from the mushy stuff. Okay. Well, well, that, let, me, it, let me just clarify. It, if, if somebody doesn't okay. know, Don is Channel 13, the local Houston ABC affiliate. Their eye in the sky. He is the helicopter reporter. So so yeah. just in case you weren't aware, that's really what he's talking about is some of his duties. And, and a lot of people, I, for one, get to where I want to talk to fill dead air. Don's smart enough and professional enough. He knows better than to do that with things like you're talking about. And we're so glad that Don is professional on Channel 13 because here he's out of control. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. well, I, well, I, I got 13, nothing to say. On 13, Don's in the air. Here he's full air. <laughs> <laughs> and all of it's hot. <laughs> hey, so, fellas, I'm going to tell you something. Last year um, was pretty interesting when it came to crashes. Uh, we almost came close to the same exact number of fatalities, 4,000 plus. Uh, in the state. Wow. Um, I have a number, but I want to hold off on giving that number because there's still some crashes pending. As a matter of fact, there was a, a unfortunate uh, crash in Beaumont, in the Beaumont area, if you will. And uh, the very next day, which was the next year, the individual ended up passing. So that changed numbers. But I will tell you, and I've said this for years on this program, 
Driving is the most dangerous thing any one of us can do, and we just have to be careful. Let me bring something up to you. People always ask, if I'm involved in a vehicle crash, because uh, in law enforcement, uh, Don, we don't say accident. We say crash. And if I'm involved in a vehicle crash or a collision, what in the hell, what do I do? Well, first of all, you know, it's your responsibility uh, after making sure you're good. And if you can move, it's your responsibility to make sure that the other party that's involved is okay. Number two, take pictures, take pictures, take pictures. You would not believe how many times people call my office every Monday or Tuesday asking for information on their crash. If you go to the DPS website and you click in, ask a trooper a question, I'm one of those troopers for eight counties. And people call all the time every Monday and Tuesday asking for information on their crash because they didn't get a, the ample amount of pictures or the information. Take pictures. We're going to take our pictures, but you need to take yours. Take pictures, take pictures. All law enforcement entities all over the state of Texas, all law enforcement entities understand that the individuals involved need to take pictures. So long gone the day of, hey, you need to stand over here and we need to conduct the investigation. No, they're going to allow you to take the pictures. Exchange information. That's so important. Make sure before you leave that unfortunate crash scene that you get the other party's information and that they get yours. Is it legal for you to move off the roadway when a crash happens? Yes, you can. So you get into an unfortunate crash on 610 or I-10 or whatever, and the vehicles are drivable, both parties are okay physically, we advise you to move that vehicle off of the road because I promise you, Brother Mars, I promise you there's another crash about to happen involved with yours. So we, we advise the folks to move off the road. That's going to be my theme for a couple of months. If you're involved in a crash, move off of the road. Technology, video, and all that other stuff is so prevalent here within the state. And within the city, we don't need vehicles to stay on the scene until law enforcement gets there because it may take them a while. Fellas, I will tell you, one of the biggest problems that we have in our community is folks driving on the shoulder. You know, you can drive on the shoulder. There's seven times that you're allowed to drive on the shoulder. Number one, of course, is if you're going to stop the vehicle and check for any malfunctions. Second one, of course, is if you're going to actually accelerate to make a right turn. And that's where the confusion comes in. People use that shoulder as their own lane, as their own travel lane. And they use the shoulder to avoid 20 cars to get to that light to make the right turn. Well, the state law tells us that you can use that lane to basically, well, de-accelerate to make the right turn. So as you're as you're approaching that light, you say, okay, well, there it is. It's three cars ahead of me. Let me continue on and slow down to make the right turn. You got to be smart about that. I promise you, if a state trooper sees you driving on the lane, using you using that shoulder for your own lane, you're gonna get stopped. That's just how it is. Um, of course, we use the shoulder to avoid a collision. If we're directed by the police, we can use the shoulder. We can use the shoulder, of course, to drive over if a vehicle is traveling more faster than us in the rear. You got some guy being silly and he's driving aggressively and he's coming up on your rear. Guess what? You can drive on the shoulder let that, you know what, get out of your mm -hmm. way. But again, the shoulder is not our own lane. It's a lane, of course, for disabled vehicles, individuals that are stopped that are adjusting the car seat for the baby or whatever the case. We cannot use the shoulder as our own lane. What you're going to find out, Don, and they'll, they'll probably broadcast this a couple of times this year uh, on air, the racing. I will tell you, the racing in, in Houston has decreased because of uh, the new law change, and the individuals are aware of that. But you're probably going to see more task force throughout the year because the individuals that are racing, not only do they cause danger to themselves, but those that are around them. Let me let yeah, me just let me just uh, inter interrupt you and just say, you know, uh, where we're broadcasting from is not too far from Highway 90A, 
out here in Sugarland, and uh, it's a very nice area. A great big three, four lane road on Highway 98 going in both directions. And I will tell you that I can be in my bedroom at night and I can hear them racing on Highway 90A, and it just drives me absolutely insane. Open mufflers, I mean motorcycles. Uh, there was a, a bunch of motorcycles here just a couple of weeks ago that came down. Highway 90A, and I guess they got the green light from a stop, and they let it rip all the way to the next light. And I, I'm wondering, would that be something that the Sugarland Police would take care of, or would DPS take that? We'll take care of it. Uh, what I'll do is I'll re- because Fort Bend is one of my counties, and um, you know we work with Sugarland Police Department a lot. So what I'll do is, hey, uh, hey brother Morris, sound like we got a snitch in the house. What I'll do is, uh, <laughs> I'll I'll, uh, I'll advise my guys Monday morning. Uh, once we get through the, the weekend, I'll advise them Monday morning, and I'll reach out to Sugarland because hey, we got to combat that stuff. Here's the deal, guys: if we don't slow those folks down, uh, we're going to end up working a fatality. So that's just the bottom so, line. So you is know, it drag yeah. racing or is it like top end type racing? It's drag uh, racing. It, 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 it could be drag, or it could be uh, you know a, a acceleration test. Just two in the, just an individual, just uh, just having a blast. Which hey, I, I look guys, I get it. You know what I mean. But there's a place, and if you schedule it, a time to do that. And there's several areas where they'll allow you, you know, with an anonymous fee. To go on their track and, and take care of business. Well, I will uh, tell you that being a drag racing guy, we don't like to call that drag racing. We call right. it street racing yes. is what it is. And however, yeah, 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 however sure. you want to look at it, it, it doesn't sure. make any difference. And, hey, look, you know, there was a time in my life when I was a teenager and really got into cars and that sort of stuff. We would go out on a road way out. There was yes. nobody yeah. on it. Nobody. There were yeah. no streets coming into the road. It was at least a mile long. Now, we didn't race for a mile long. In his yeah. Model T. Yeah, my Model T. But, uh, <laughs> but Model there, T, yeah. there was there was nobody there. Right. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and you know, if you got to do something like that, pick your place. But don't do it on Highway yeah, 98. We're, we're like you. Where we live, we're close enough to the highway. There's an overpass. And late at night, particularly on the weekend, and it's mainly motorcycles. You can tell by the way they sound. They come down, they come over that overpass, and they've got a nice long stretch, speed limit 75 anyway. And you wow. can hear them wind up, and, I mean, you can hear them all over town. <laughs> yeah. And, and they're they're already doing 60, 70, well, and then I'm, I don't know how fast I'm they get thinking going. it was probably somebody that got a car from the media pool, and they're doing a car review. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I, got a, I got a question for Conrad. Yes, sir. So let me ask you this. And we, we all talked about Teslas and, and these automated vehicles. I'm going to tell you something, boys. The new law book came out, and I'm actually teaching at the Houston Police. I teach the Transportation Code for the Houston Police Department for their academy. So... If you want to know, all Houston police officers for the past 13 years uh, had to go through me to learn about Texas laws when it comes to stopping vehicles. And I'm telling you, that automated vehicle section is thick. Let me ask you something real quick. Why does every time we get a crash dealing with a Tesla, my phone rings off the hook from the media? What is what do you what, what is that? What do you, well, do you think? Because Tesla, I, mean, I don't know. You know, Teslas, they've bragged about their self-driving system. And I think everybody's wondering, was the self-driving system engaged? And was that, I, I, I'm not going to say the cause of the crash, but was it an attributing factor to the crash? Because self-driving is a stupid name for a feature on a vehicle because the car doesn't self-drive. You still have to be paying attention to it. But, yeah, you know, yeah. the the thought is, was the... The driver absolutely paying no attention, and the self-driving system got lost, and that's what caused the crash. And, you know, th- that features on more than just Teslas. That features on a number of other cars. I think Ford calls it Blue Cruise. Yeah. General Motors Ooh, yes. calls it Super Cruise. They all have these automated driving features, which... I think it's a horrible thing to advertise. You know, you look at the GMC truck one, and here they are clapping Singing. while the car is driving. Yeah. And the guy's got a uh, a trailer behind him, and he's using Super Cruise. Dumb advertising, but, you know, we, you know not the first it's, time it, GM's done some dumb yeah, advertising. And, and what people don't realize, when you see that, they're on a 
straight road on a bridge that's got plenty of marking on it for the systems to pick up on and never fail. They never show that when you're going around a curve or right, intersections right. because the system doesn't work. But I think that's it's, why the media calls you is because they're trying to find out whether or not the uh, was the automatic driving system was an attributing factor to it. The, the funny thing is Tesla knows. Tesla can tell you. You know, they can download data out of the car. General Motors can download data out of the car because of uh, uh, OnStar, OnStar, and they know whether or not the automatic driving system was engaged when that vehicle was involved in the impact. Well, I tell you, I'm, I am a fan of technology, but uh, we'll see where the future takes us. What I do know is, and I'll just, I'll just put this out here, what I do know, last year on paper as of now, we had 4,176, wow. 4,176 folks die in vehicle crashes. And I'm, I'm going to tell you that that's an astronomical number when you think about it. Driving is the most dangerous thing each and every last one of us will do every single day. It's very important. Number one, we need to be mindful, you know, look to the left, look to the right, you know, look around us. We get that. But one thing that a lot of us forget. We have to do those self-inspections on our vehicles, making sure that our tires are, of course, I stopped the guy coming from Austin the other day, and he was it was a truck, tractor, and trailer. I mean, the, the tires looked like the top of my head. Um, I, I, I stopped the guy the other day. He had a, uh, a a load on the back of his vehicle that was so, the, the load was so heavy to where the tires were rubbing on the inner a portion of the fender wells. I oh, mean, wow. we got to make sure that the vehicles that we're driving are safe to travel down the road. Well, Let's I've, take I've this got, month. I've got, I've got something to say about that. Now, during COVID and all the transportation issues that were going on, they were looking for truck drivers and support for transportation, for long haul. They were looking to hire people because they didn't have enough. Who did they hire? Are they, are they independents? Are they going through the proper training? Uh, are these people that shouldn't be on the road to begin with that are using these vehicles. I, I'm, I'm feeling the pain there because I see it too. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Um, and I've said this live on air before, what would we be without our truck drivers, but they have to be in compliance. Um, and you know, I had a guy call me, Oh man, this week has flown by. I had a guy call me Thursday and he had an international CDL and an international commercial driver's license. And he wanted to go ahead and get that switched over to a Texas CDL. Can't do it, man. Uh, you got to go through our system. Uh, what I will say is, boys, we are very hard on our truck drivers, very. Uh, but we need them to be in compliance because what I will tell you, and uh, I just did a live shot for Channel 13 uh, the other day, right there on I-10, had an HEB truck uh, lose control. And next thing you know, the roadway is shut down for six hours. So it's a little different from a fender bender between a two vehicles or three vehicles versus a truck, tractor, and trailer. It turns into a, a, a actual uh, traffic logistical mess. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so a 4,000 pound car doesn't have the impact strength of an 80,000 pound fully loaded rig. Yes, sir. Well, three ways we can reduce fatalities, fellas. Number one, of course, the enforcement. You know, the boys and girls of law enforcement, we have to be out there stopping the cars, being visible and meeting the people. Number two, we got to make sure we educate the people. And I thank In Will Time for allowing me through the years to come and help educate our folks, you know, of course, with the help of you guys. And three, and something neither one of us have control over, and that's roadway engineering. TxDOT, they have to continue doing the great job that they do, putting up the barriers, uh, trying to fill the potholes. I will tell you this, fellas. If it wasn't for that concrete barrier the other day, that 18-wheeler would have went right across ITN, and that would have been a different crash. And so, I'll tell you what, Steve, I sure do see a lot more head-on crashes these days. I don't, I don't know what's up with that. Head-on well, crashes. Had, it's terrible. Yeah, we had we had one this morning, unfortunately. Uh, literally one this morning. So you got to pay attention, Brother Don, and uh, that's just in our everyday lives. This This is a good life that we live. And 2024 is going to be a good year. Fellas, I think it's going to be our year. I think it, I think we're going to get done. See, Don, I put him in the category <laughs> of uh, great journalists like Larry King, uh, Walter Crump. I was thinking more like Don King. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, we go with the hot air crap again. <laughs> Steve, we love talking to you, brother. Thank you so much for joining us today. We wish you Thank a great you, day and, and give your give your family our love and I hope the boys are doing well. I will. And while we're all here, can we put in a vote? Can we get Brother Mars a raise? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're going to raise me off his makes. chair in a minute. That's what they're going <laughs> to do. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you said that like five or six years ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Steve, thanks again, man. We always enjoy talking to you. Take care of yourself. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Sergeant Stephen Woodard, uh, DPS State Trooper. And, always uh, fun. One uh, of the best. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I uh, got some uh, recalls to tell you about, not just some. Um, a lot. Uh-oh. Ford Motor Company recalling 112,965 F-150 trucks because of a potential issue with the rear axle hub bolt that could increase the risk of rolling away or crashing. So how many times through the years have we done a recall on a Ford that wouldn't stay in park? Rolling away. Rolling away and crashing. Yeah. Dozens of them. Yeah. In July, it's Ford recalled 870,000 F-150s because of an unexpected parking brake activation. Well, there you go. Here's more. A driver's airbag may become deactivated in all of the Ford F-Series for 23 model year. Oops. All of them. You won't find that out until you need it. Yep. BMW 430i cylinder head cover may crack and leak oil. Yep. You're yeah, real aware of this. This valve, is the valve cover gasket. brand new 2024. Uh, on which, yeah. which vehicle? Oh, BMW. It says cylinder head oh, cover, BMW. but yeah. same thing. Airbag may not deploy properly in the Toyota Corolla Cross. However, many of the, they don't sell many of those, 2022 to 23. Lexus, what is an OCS sensor? OCS. Obsessive, compulsive uh, well, occu- sensor. Occupant sensor, maybe it's part of the airbag system. I don't know. For the passenger side. But uh, lots of Lexuses and lots of Toyotas. And I'm going to go through it from 2020 to 2022 models. And I'll give you, uh, well, look for the VIN on your car. It's probably in your wallet with your insurance card. And you uh, plug that in to safercar.gov. Mm-hmm. There's a blank there. Yep. And it'll tell you whether your car is being recalled occupant or not. Occupant class. Classification system. So it tells you whether or not there's a passenger in the passenger seat. Uh, high voltage battery modules may overheat on the Audi e tron for 2019 through oh. 2022. Only once. Only once. Uh, door strikers may fracture on the Chevy Blazer, Equinox, and Terrain for 2024. That's another recall. Here's good. another one. Roof rail airbag inflators may rupture on the Buick and the Chevrolet, the Verano and the Cruze for 2014. 10-year-old car. Mm. Land Rover, Range Rover Sport for 2023. The exterior vehicle lighting may fail. Uh, Also, improperly bonded body panels on the Land Rover, Range Rover. I think that's the same company that makes Jaguars. Oh, sorry. Did I say that? I didn't say it this time. Cross-member connection may loosen. No, it was in my head. (laughs) Cross-member connection may loosen. Mercedes-Benz Sprinters, 1,500, 2,500, 3,500, 4,500 for the 2020 model year. That's not good. (laughs) Missing frame member reinforcement fasteners. Again, the Sprinters, 19 through 22 model years. Partition wall may detach. Sprinters for the 2019 through 2023 model. <laughs> Engine compartment fire. Thermal, Thermal events. events. Kia Sorento for 2011. They're going way back in time. Got nothing else to recall. But yep. remember, they scored well in Consumer <laughs> Report. Yeah. <laughs> Improper seal may allow oil and fuel to leak in the Mercedes-Benz GLC 300, 350, and 450, 23, and 24 model years. I'm not, sorry, I'm having a little. Spit it up. Everybody can hear that. It's got a hairball. I know. It's, as much it was, as you thought you muted it. Well, I did my microphone. Lucky everybody else. Mm-hmm. I think every Mercedes model year and uh, brand uh, model. Since uh, day one. Since day one. <laughs> 2021 through 2023, fuel pump shutdown may cause loss of drive power. You think? Yep. Yeah, that'll do it every time. So there's just too many of them to list there. Nissan Altima. Loose bolts may cause a loss of steering control for the 2024 Altima. <laughs> Engine compartment fire from a short circuit. Hyundai Kona 2024. Ooh. Kona, there you there go, you go. There's your Kona review. Kona review. There you go. Bring the hot dogs and s'mores. That was a hot <laughs> item there. 
Lots of recalls, man. I mean, it, it, it's the end of the year. You got to have. You got to start the, get them all out of the way at the beginning guess, of the year. I guess. Uh, I'm not even going to do that. And so the airbag thing is all over again, 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 again. ARC Automotive, and uh, it, it, the airbag thing is going to be huge. Uh, they're looking at being 67 million vehicles. Well, the airbags are like COVID. It's going. It's here to stay. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's true. But I will say this: that airbags save lives. Absolutely, that's they true. Do. Absolutely. They so do. you know, there's a risk in everything. Well, I've always said seatbelts save lives. Airbags reduce injuries. Um, we're getting close to the end of uh, this hour, but I didn't want to mention that the Ford Super Duty was named 2024 North American Truck of the I, Year. I heard that. While the Kia EV9 was named Utility Vehicle of the Year, and the Toyota Prius and Prius Prime Hatchback took home. Car of the Year honors in the North American Car Truck and Utility Vehicle that Awards. One. So Jack wouldn't tell us all of that. Well, he, had to wait he already knew. Jack, Jack is knew. flying today, but he's going to join us next week. Okay. And we're going to talk but about I, it. I don't get the Prius. I, I don't. I think there's better models out there. But well, you have to take the is. Prius for what it's worth. For what it is. For what it for is. What it's worth. Well, no, I mean it. It, it huh. it's. It does everything it says it's going to do, and it does a very good job of yeah. it. It has Toyota reliability. Is it like something guy, that I would buy? No. no. But it's like the guy from Consumer Reports says, Toyota has been doing that same drivetrain same synergy yeah. for 20 years, and they do a damn good job of it. I agree. They and actually, practiced a lot. And we've, we've driven those cars, and they're comfortable, and they're easy to use. I mean, if you're not into cars and you just have to commute from here to there – if you're just after transportation, there's a lot of choices out yep, there like that. That's a good one. All right. But well, I have fun. Yeah. So that's it for this portion of the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. We've got more coming up. Stay with us here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that, too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to GCAutoShield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or GCAutoShield.com. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla and College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is now part of the iHeart family. Now you'll have access to 24-7 Car Talk anytime you need a fix. Just download the iHeart Radio app and ask for In Wheel Time Car Talk, and there we are. Be sure to save us in your iHeart library for instant access. No matter where you are, you have the best car talk show right on your PC, laptop, or mobile device and never have to worry about finding us again. Of course, you can always get access to our video and audio streams via InWheelTime.com and your favorite podcast channel, and all of this is free to you. From the iHeartRadio app, you'll not only hear our Saturday morning live show, but the best shows of the past, updated weekly. Never miss a minute of up-to-date new car reviews, pre-owned reviews, Conrad's Car Clinic, informative interviews, automotive news, and the most fun car talk show on the planet. 
Just download the iHeartRadio app, search for In Real Time Car Talk, save it to your library, and with a tap of the icon, you'll be in touch with your favorite Car Talk team. In Real Time Car Talk, streaming now on iHeart.com slash In Real Time Car Talk. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.